Hello and welcome to West Wales. And yes, it's July and it's raining. Of course it is. And nothing's really gone according to plan this week. So my planned video is, yeah, is actually, I didn't actually film any of it. So today I thought I would just take you along and show you what I'm doing. I've got one craft project that I really am desperate to get on with, but the rest of it is just going to be seeing what happens on a rainy day here in North Pembrokeshire. So, see you in a moment. We're on our morning walk. That's me and the dog. And she's got her little wax jacket on as well. And before you start shouting at me for being a stereotype, I don't really care about brands of jackets and clothes, which I think is fairly self-evident. But, and this is a big but, I like things to last. And barbers last forever. My dad has a motorcycle barber and he had it in the 1960s and it's still going strong. He doesn't ride a motorbike anymore, but the barber is still going strong. So I have a barber, Andrew has a barber and the dog has a barber. Oh, sorry, let, I'll turn you around and show you. Millie, Millie, where are you? There you go. So this is her little, her little coat. And it keeps her dry because she really does not do rain. So I think it's not uncommon amongst us crafting, weaving, knitting, spinning folk is that we are interested in sustainable fashion and having a lighter impact on the planet and worrying about our carbon footprint. And one of the things that's really difficult to do is actually find clothing that is truly sustainable. Now, uh, wax jackets. They're cotton waxed on the top and they last and last and last. And the reason they last is because you can re-wax them yourself at home. If they get damaged, you can send them back to the factory and they repair them. And literally they will last a lifetime. So I got heartily sick of buying Gore-Tex jackets. Gore-Tex jackets? I don't know what they are. Gore-Tex. <laughs> Shall I start this again? Gore-Tex jackets that literally lasted a year and then they were falling apart and I couldn't get them clean and they weren't waterproof anymore and they had rips all over them and really they just were not fit for purpose. So finally, finally, a few years ago, I think it's about four years ago now, Andrew bought me this jacket. He said, look, you just have to bite the bullet and I know you don't want to be a stereotype, but it's worth it. And I have to say, it is worth it and I love it. If I lived in a colder climate, it might be a bit cold but it's never really, really cold here. It's wet and windy, but not really, really cold. So this is absolutely perfect. And the dog has one because, well, for exactly the same reasons, is that she's had jackets before and we've had dogs with jackets before and they just don't last. And it drives me insane that every year you have to buy a new coat or a new jacket. And yeah, don't think that is practical really and I'm generally quite a practical person. So in today's video I thought I would show you my solution I've come up with to using some yarn that I spun, I really liked it when I spun it, and then I knitted it up into a little waistcoat and hated it. So it's been unpicked but I think I know what I'm going to do with it. So when we go back to the house then that is what I'm going to show you. Because as I said earlier about nothing went to plan this week. I had my plan to finish off my socks. It was my staycation project. Absolutely did not work. So if you have my newsletter, then you'll know I was talking about planning this staycation and I was really excited about it. But yeah, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't really happen. Our friend came over and we had lunch, but that's about all that happened. So yeah, a bit of a, bit of a kind of, oh, it just was one of those weeks where things happened that we weren't planning to happen so yeah our, our plans got pushed and I guess that's the point about staycation is actually you can push your plans so yeah we've pushed them for a couple of weeks time when hopefully 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 our fam our family member who had to cancel is going to come down anyway right let's carry on with the walk and I'll see you in a moment
very far from home, but it kind of looks like we're in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just showing you this lovely pink flower. This is Rose Bay Willow Herb. It's a really, really important bee plant because this time of the year you get the bramble, which has been quite early and it's, it's nearly over. And then Rose Bay Willow Herb, and then we get the heather. And that pretty much is the end of the season for flowers for bees because they although there still will be flowers about they do like wildflowers over garden flowers and then in beginning of September you get the ivy crop and ivy honey is a bit yucky so when we are dealing with the bees we will take our honey off just before the ivy starts and all the ivy honey they get to keep. So that's the way we've just walked up and it is raining quite a lot so I'm actually going to stop filming because I don't think my camera is going to enjoy this rain. So let's go back to the house and I'll show you what my plans for my fat yarn that I didn't really like is. I'm back, it's still raining and I'm in the conservatory so you are going to be able to hear the rain on the roof. So how how successful this is going to be, I don't know. So if it's too noisy, I'll have to record it another time, but we'll try. So, as I was explaining, I haven't really got an awful lot of crafting done this week, but I did have a bit of an idea of what I was going to do with something that just hadn't really worked out. And ages ago, I made this big wool, big fat wool, and I really enjoyed making it to the point in which I kind of was like, oh, I think I'm going to buy a jumbo flyer, which I still haven't done and I'm not actually sure I'm going to because when I knitted it up, I kind of didn't really like it. And so I have been unknitting it, unravelling it, frogging it, taking it apart, whatever you like to say. And... I've really been a bit stuck as to what I'm going to do with it. However, I was watching somebody making a peg loom and I thought, ah, oh, that's a good idea, a peg loom. Haven't got a peg loom, haven't got the equipment to make a peg loom, but what I do have is this just sort of, um, this little frame loom. And I was, I was weaving on it and I didn't really like what I was weaving on it, so I took it all off. But I think a sort of doormat or a little sort of rug about that size to go where I stand to do the washing up would be a really good thing. And maybe this fat wall would make a good rug wall. I mean, maybe it can go by the front door, although um, I think probably by the front door it would get stuck. Um, the door would sort of open, up, open onto it and get stuck, so it probably isn't the best place. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double warp this because you see there's quite big gaps between these slots. Because I mean, this is really designed for making sort of wall hangings, and oh, honestly, I don't know why I bought it really because I, I don't really like wall hangings and I'm not going to make any, so I don't know what I was thinking. It seemed like a good idea at the time. However, I have since learned that it was not a good idea and it does tend to sort of sit unused in the cupboard. So, going to have a go at using it. So, without further ado, let's get warping. So, weavers of the world, do not get too upset because about the way I'm doing this because I don't really know what I'm doing. So, this is not a how-to in any way, shape or form. So I think what I'm going to do is, without losing the warp, is I'm sort of going to just go round and round, and then round and round again. Oh, come on, let's sort your life out. So, and I don't know if this is a good way or a bad way, but it's the way I'm doing it. And then, please, weavers who are more experienced than me, you can let me know in the comments below 
exactly what I should have been doing because I'm pretty sure this is not it. Anyway, come back to you when I've done this. Okay, there we go. So it's warped and I've got two warp strings in each slot. So what I need to do now is have a way of separating them at the bottom. So I think I'm going to sort of weave a bit of waste yarn in and try and separate it. I have done it before, but I am, as I've said, really not any kind of weaving expert or even vaguely proficient at this. So trial and error, but it's the best way to learn, I think. Well, it's finally stopped raining and I've come out with a dog again because we have two walks a day and we've come to St David's airfield and it is a disused Second World War airfield and it was used in the defence of the Atlantic convoys. So planes used to take off from here, land here to escort the, I think they were called Liberty ships, weren't they, when they... Um, the Americans were supporting us by actually bringing food because <laughs> we were kind of at the point of starvation, I think, which is uh, something maybe sometimes we forget. So that's what the role of this airfield was. And it is now a nature reserve. But I'm going to turn you around in a minute and show you what's so great about this. The brilliant thing about this is that the old concrete access roads are still here. So if you are a wheelchair user or you use a mobility scooter, there's loads of really good accessible walks. And the dog loves it here. Andrew loves it here, although he's actually not with me today. He is at home enjoying the Formula One at the moment. It's a bit breezy, so I probably can't really show you everything because it just... It really distorts the sound on here and I think at some point I am going to have to invest in some different microphones so that you don't get deafened by the wind which does blow quite a lot in Pembrokeshire. Anyway I thought I'd show you this and when we get a little bit further on there's another thing I want to show you. Over there are the hills and mountains that sort of lead down to the sea at St David's and then you turn around here and in the middle of an airfield there's a stone circle and it's free to come here you don't have to pay anybody it's just here and you can come and enjoy it and be amazed by it and have lots of theories as to why it's here because nobody knows so these are, these are pre-Christian, I mean, they're really old. They're sort of, well, how long, how old is Christianity? 2,000 years old, so they're sort of thousands and thousands of years old. And nobody knows what they were used for. And it really wasn't aliens. But anyway, they're good fun. And you can just have a picnic in the middle of here walk through here or equally make YouTube videos here and no one will charge you entrance or bat an eyelid we'll just let you enjoy 
this very interesting historic site. So we've had a lovely walk and now it's back for a cup of tea and not a piece of cake because I haven't made any cake this week, it's been so hectic. But a cup of tea and, I don't know, biscuit I expect. Hello and welcome to a rather sunny evening in West Wales and I'm on our local beach and I don't know whether you're going to be able to see behind me but there are curlews or a curlew and there's black headed gulls and there's been some oyster catchers and we're sort of, what are we, well I suppose we're late July really aren't we and the holiday season is about to really kick off because the schools break up this Friday so we are just taking advantage sorry the sun is in my eyes we're really taking advantage before the whole of Pembrokeshire is invaded and our population doubles as it does every summer and you know it's great that the visitors come here and they're really important for the economy but you know we're just taking the last chance of a bit of quiet until September really when everything calms right down again. So I shall turn you around and show you where we are. The tide has turned, comes in quite fast, but it's very shallow. So we'll be able to get back to the beach very easily. And Millie's being very brave because she really doesn't like swimming. But she's suddenly decided that she does like paddling. So I'm hoping that as she gets a bit older, she will enjoy swimming. What do you think, Millie? She says, oh, I'm not sure about it, really. We're on our evening walk and in here somewhere, there is a seal fishing. I can see jellyfish. I don't know whether you can see jellyfish. But they're in there somewhere. But where is this seal going to surface? He was really close to the wall. So we're just about the end of our staycation and you really can't have a staycation without fish and chips. So I am going over the road to go and buy some. So the best fish and chips always come from somewhere where they cook it to order. You have to wait a little bit longer, but it really is worth it. So I'm really, really looking forward to these. So it's back to work, and for me that means illustration and design. And I sat down to finish working on a new collection that, fingers crossed, will be for sale in a new Etsy store very soon. And I promise I'll share my progress as I go along. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you really, really soon.